Ms. Johnson, you and your mother say even though the father of your two-year-old son, Jaden Taylor, is a deadbeat dad, he has never denied him up until a couple of weeks ago. And today you claim to have medical evidence that proves Mr. Taylor is the father of your son. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Taylor, you and your mom say you have valid reasons why you believe you are not Jaden's biological father and you now refuse to be in his life because he's not your child. Yes, Your Is Honor. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so Ms. Johnson, explain to me what happened a couple of weeks ago. My son was over his house. He was only over there five days and he texted me like, you need to get your son and I'm not getting him until I get a blood test, like... Out of the blue? Out of the blue, yes. And I have here some evidence, too. What kind um, of evidence? A message that I would Jerome, like to let me show see you. this. So, wait, out of the blue, you all are co-parenting this little boy. How old is Jaden? Two. Two years old. You're co-parenting him. Out of the blue, he said, come get your son? Yes. What is this evidence you handed me? The message. This is the message. Oh, he yes. sent you a text? Yes, on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook. All right. It says, hey, get your son. I'm not getting him till I get a blood test. Somebody told me what you said, so I don't want him till I get a blood test. R.S. I won't repeat that. I don't need him another day. Wow. You sent this message, Mr. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. Why did you send this out the blue? It was actually a week ago. Um, me and my son was in the, in the house playing around. Um, I was told someone was outside for me. I went outside. A girl told me she had something to tell me about my baby, my baby mother. She said, Ms. Johnson told another girl that, uh, that Jaden wasn't mine. So I inboxed Ms. Johnson and told her, I don't want him another day and I want him... So you day. actually had Jaden at that time? Yes. You, at that point, you're thinking, this is my biological child, I'm spending time with my son. Yes. And then somebody just comes over your house knocking on the door? Yes. I mean, I believe it because she always say stuff like that. Like, she always say that he's not mine. Um, I have actually... I've a, never heard her say that. I've never heard her say that. I like actually has a recording saying she said he's not mine. So if you can hand this up. You have a recording? Yes. Oh. If Jerome, let me hear it, that. It Where know. is it? In the voicemails? Yes. So just hit play and I'll hear the voicemail. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. That's not your baby. That's not your baby. That you right. That's not your baby. Somebody else the daddy. Somebody else is the daddy. Take him up off of your. That's what you can do. Take him all the way completely off of your. Period. Take him off. No, and I'm finna come get my own baby. How about that? That's mine. That's my baby. Whoa. Miss Johnson, is that you? Yes. It is me. This he is you me. telling him it's not your his child. Yes, this is after he messaged me that. Right, and that's that's, that's all in the blue on my. If he's denying it, I mean, why wouldn't she say it? I, you know, I don't blame her. If you you tell why him, you you yeah. said come get your baby. So of course they're young. You know, so you're gonna say whatever to make him mad, just like he's saying stuff to make her mad. So you believe Miss Johnson that she's just talking out of anger? Yes, I think that was all out of anger. But wait a minute, you didn't just say let me come get my baby. You said you right, it's not your baby. Yeah. Because he don't have to be. That's what I said. So, Thank let me all. ask you this, Ms. Johnson. Why do you think someone would just randomly come up to him and start talking about how you told somebody that he's not uh, Jaden's biological he... father? I think he made it up. Me, personally, Your Honor. Why do you think he'd make it up, Ms. Johnson? Because he don't want to step up to the plate and be a dad. He does nothing. He just, you nothing. know... That's a lie. What you I do? I do everything for what him. What proof? Where's the proof? You ain't seen him in five months, so what you um, do? I have a lot of proof. I sent... Okay, and where's it? Can you see it? Can you, can you, you got any receipts? No. Oh. You ain't got okay. that? So, wait a minute. That's what I thought. He don't have to have receipts. She know we do for no, him. No, for do? free. You that you know don't do nothing. It don't, what do you do, free, It doesn't matter. I buy him stuff. Home. It doesn't matter. Right, you are being taken care of. You don't know who in your house. Right. At the end of the day... I ran away over there, too. All right, let's get some order. At the end of the day, when he's at my house and Jalen has something to do, Miss Johnson will not come and get him. I text her one time, my daughter texted her, and said, can you come and get him? My mama need to go to the hospital. She never showed up. Never so showed you're up. saying Miss Johnson leaves Jaden there and doesn't come back and pick him up? Don't come back and get him. <laughs> that's, that's usually why I don't get him, because she never come back and get him. It took for my son to have pneumonia. Pneumonia in the hospital. 
Mild pneumonia in the hospital for them to even answer the phone. Like, you don't even know. That's irritating. It's like, he don't even... He's lying. It's a never lying. To, watch him, to cut off the phone. If you gotta hunt somebody down to get the baby, first of all, and then, you know, you finally get the baby, you know, then he wanna call. Can you come back and get him and make up all these stories? You, you hadn't had him in a while. He just... You know, ain't even the truth that you probably... Well, okay, th- this is just a... Uh... I've sent messages. Is I there any him... communication? No, yes, there is. No, we it's all, not. We, we we hardly talk because I don't like talking to her as you see it through the voice message. That's how she talks to me. No, no. that's how she talks to me on the regular. Life. All right, up until this point, Miss Johnson, he never denied Jaden up until this point about I, a week ago. You I you just, never heard that come out of his mouth? I've never heard it. I just heard rumors that he said it. You know, that's why he went five months without seeing him. When the baby was born, they had their whole family there. Uh, Daughters with the baby's father there and everybody. So, I mean... Was the whole family there, whole uh, family. Mr. I had Taylor? To, I had to Taylor? pull out. Were you all anticipating them, the birth of uh, this slew. baby because you truly thought it was your biological yes. child? Yes, Your Honor. Do you remember when your son said, somebody told me that the baby's not mine? Actually, I didn't hear that until just recently. Mr. Taylor, something that important you never told your mother? She'd be a little too busy, so she'll never be at the home Too home. busy to find out that the <laughs> grandchild she <laughs> like... thinks is hers is not her biological child? If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Have you ever asked for the DNA test? Yes, Sean, I have proof of that right here. You have? I was I'd like to see that, Jerome. You asked for a DNA test. Tell oh. me the story. How did that happen? Actually, the court sent in a paper saying I had to go take a DNA test. I went down there to take a DNA test. After I left, I messaged Ms. Johnson and told her that she was supposed to come with me to take the DNA test for my son. Um, after that, she said... I told her she had to do- go down there and reschedule a schedule one for him. She he never only went because child him. support started sending him letters in the mail. Yep. That's why he went, yep. to be truthful. That's okay. why he, he didn't so want to be to to submit, child so, support. So you're, what you're saying is he didn't ask for the DNA test. He was ordered to submit. Yes. Okay. And so this paperwork confirms that you did go and submit to the DNA testing. Yes, Your Honor. You had it done, but what you're saying is she never showed. Yes, Your Honor. Did you not show up with Jaden, Miss Johnson? Not intentionally. But Jaden was about nine months old when this happened. Yes. That's like over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had... You, you never showed up to get the DNA test done? No. Why? Because I, I felt that it wasn't necessary. He wasn't denying them. Then I knew he was the... So you're saying he was not denying Jaden, mm-hmm. so you felt like, what's the use of going to have it? Right. I mean, yeah, he... It wasn't no question, supposedly, then. He all over his Facebook and so, everything else. So, Mr. Taylor, did her not showing up somehow fuel your doubt? A little bit. A little bit. I mean, I always been around him. Like, he was always... He was always with me. He, like she said, she, he's always... He's all mm-hmm. over my Facebook. Videos, pictures... I like little conversations we have. I post them on Facebook and stuff like that. So how is it that some one person out of the blue can walk up to you and exactly. just say, you know what? Exactly. That baby you've been with for two years, that's not your child. Exactly. She, she how... always say it. She always says it's when because... we get into an argument. The point is, is because when you get into an argument, Miss Johnson confirms it. Yes. Have you said it more than one time, Miss Johnson? Mm-hmm. So you know you can't unring that bell. Mm-hmm. You know that. Yes. Okay. I mean, you know, once you say that to a man, he's never gonna forget that. Mm-hmm. They, men forget a lot of things. <laughs> right, Jerome? <laughs> but they don't forget that. And honestly, how could they? So you know you have a part to play in fueling this doubt, right, Ms. Johnson? Yes. I do have one paper that I would like to show you. I'd like to see that, Jerome. Um, what is this evidence showing? This is just basically his eczema that he has. Okay, the you child know, has eczema? Yes. Okay. And a heart murmur. And a heart murmur, yes. And, and a heart murmur. If you look at... Just like Mr. Taylor has. Mr. Taylor also... And you believe that these are two medical issues that the child has in common with Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Taylor, do you have a heart murmur? Yes, I do. And Ms. Johnson, you say... Jaden was born with a heart murmur. Yes. Diagnosed at the hospital, like, one day old. Yes. All right. I'm very curious about this heart murmur issue, and I would like to hear from an expert on this. Jerome, can you please escort Dr. Tasneem Bhatia into the courtroom? Thank you. 
maybe go up to the witness stand right next to the judge. Hello, Dr. Tass. Hi, Your Honor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Tass, I have a few questions yeah. for you. Number one, heart murmurs. The plaintiff has asserted that the child suffers from a heart murmur, also our defendant. What exactly is a heart murmur? So a heart murmur is really just an abnormal sound in the heart rhythm. Normally you're used to listening to the heart and it goes lub-dub. With a heart murmur, you may have an extra sound or some sounds that are not classic to the normal pattern. Okay, and so are they hereditary? It's a great is question. Is there a genetic link? There is not a genetic link with heart murmurs. The majority of heart murmurs are innocent heart murmurs, meaning they're just changes in flow. They come on with either a newborn right at birth or they have, in an adult, they have something to do with pregnancy or things mm -hmm. like that. So heart murmurs, you know, for all of us that practice day in and day out are not genetically linked. Understood. Ms. Johnson, after hearing that testimony, are your feelings still the same? Is it the same belief? Mm-hmm. He know he knows that I who I ran away from my mom's house. He knows it. We had played a truth uh, game of truth or dare one time, which led to us having a baby. Oh Lord! It wasn't that. <laughs> it was we didn't have sex that day. We had so sex what? But the you next just day. and you already told the conception <laughs> day and everything. You know this. So I don't even know why you sitting up here playing with me. Hmm. Well, I didn't know that part, Yana. But well, did you know <laughs> that he ran that she ran away to his house? Yeah. She well. She actually ran away, but whenever I found her, she was over this house. See, Yolanda's never at home, so she didn't know who's in her house. So whenever I would come by and see Deja, you know, I would always knew where she was. I didn't Apparently, I was there when Deja... I didn't abandon my child. I never there. would. When you she know. came walking through my door, I was there sitting in the dining room. So if I'm okay. never well, there, everybody walks I wouldn't have never saw her. And hang out and of course... Yeah. Listen, yeah. listen, uh -huh. listen. At the end of the day, these were two young people that needed a little more supervision. Yeah. True. Right? True. True. But a game of truth or dare has led you to paternity court. Wow. And now we have yet another young person in the middle of this thing True. that in a minute, he gonna be standing in front of me if we don't stop this train from rolling. So let's get back to the issue at hand. Were you intimate during that time with anyone else besides Mr. Taylor? No. Why do you... Why, how why did you know? Was no, I'm trying to figure out. How do you know? How do you right. know? How do you know when I was living in your house? Know, your son wanted you me there. there. You your were son out wanted me there. Your son wanted me there. One at a time. One at a time. Your you son wanted me there. One at a time. When you say she was out there. She was out there. Respectfully. What does that mean? You, she was promiscuous. She was known yes. to be... Like you, huh? Yes. <laughs> this is a difficult situation. Even more difficult because we're dealing with very young people. What are you hoping for? To be honest, I'm, I just want to get it over with and want to know if he is or isn't, because if he isn't, then, you know, I, I won't be there. But if he is, I'll, I'll be there. Like, I've been there his whole life. That's right. And Ms. Johnson, you're emotional. What, what are you feeling? I don't care. I don't even care. I don't care about this. I'm ready for this to be over with. I don't care. I don't even care no more. You don't care if no, the child I don't knows care. his biological father? <laughs> he don't need him. He does. No, if he he's, don't. If he's his biological father. No, baby, he don't. Or you. Baby. Yes, he does. He needs his father and you need yours. That's Let right. me tell you something. That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've been doing this too long. I know those tears. I just wanted you to be able to say it for yourself because that's one of the reasons why this courtroom is here is to give people a voice. I don't care how young you are, how old you are, everybody deserves a moment to be heard. If you don't want to express it or you're not ready to express it, that's fine. And you may not have the words. But what you're not going to sit up here and do is talk for Jaden irresponsibly and say what he doesn't need in the form of a father because he does. And because of that, I'm going to get these results, not just for you, but for this child as well. Jerome, I'm ready. There you go. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Johnson versus Taylor, when it comes to two-year-old Jaden Taylor, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Taylor, you are the father. Thank you, Matthew, Thank you. Like I told you. Thank no, you. no, no. Like if you're not gonna, uh-uh. 
Don't start that nonsense. Thank you. Don't start that nonsense. Can I go to... I... When I gave you a chance to say something, you ain't had nothing to say. Now I read the result, you gonna pop off, not in here. <laughs> That's what we're not gonna do. Because this is an important moment. <laughs> I'm going easy on you both because you ain't nothing but young people running around here engaging in activities that produce human beings, human life, and you can't take care of yourself and you can't take care of them. You got to grow up now and we got to pull this thing together for this child. I mean it when I say I don't want to see him in here 20 years from now. I can't tell you how many times I sit in this seat and someone stands right where you're saying and says, I didn't know my father. My mother didn't know her father. This will continue unless you stop it. And the way that you stop it is to figure out how to co-parent. Mr. Clark, you're here to prove to Ms. Bolden that you are the biological father of her three-year-old daughter, Lakerny Clark. And once the DNA results prove you're right, you want to be able to spend more time with your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Bolden, you say that you've always told Mr. Clark he was not your daughter's father and hope that once these results are revealed, the real biological father, Mr. Moore, who will enter the court in a moment, will step up. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Clark, why are these results so important to you? Because it's a little child's life is sake, and my life is in sake, too. And uh, she's everything to me. She's my princess, and I really care about her. And so you are convinced that you are, in fact, the father. But you say, Ms. Bolden, that's not the case. No, ma'am. So explain. One day, we, was, uh, we had an argument about bills, as usual, about his half on the bills. Um, he stormed at the door, so I stormed at the door, too. I called Mr. Moore... Um, and we had got a hotel room, and that night I had sex with Mr. Moore, and um, that's the night I think I conceived. And so you were dating Mr. Clark. Right. You got the argument, you stormed out, then you cheated with Mr. Moore. Yes. Okay. Mr. Clark, while all of this was going on, you believed you were the father all along? Yes, Your Honor. Were you ever giving any indication that you were not? No, Your Honor. So, when you found out she was pregnant, you immediately said, this is my child? Yes, Your Honor. I had no doubts. You went to doctor's appointments? No, Your Honor. You didn't. Were you at the hospital when the baby was born? After. After, Your Honor. After. Did you sign the birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. You did? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let me see that, Jerome, please. And so, Miss Bolden, all this is going on, and he's signing the birth certificate, and he thinks this is his child, and you know... In your mind, you say that it's not? Yes. So, during your pregnancy, during the child's birth, did you ever say anything, give a hint? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we had got into it one day um, about the bills as usual. My seven months pregnant, I went to the doctor and got an ultrasound for uh, my baby. And when I came home, I showed him the ultrasound and I showed it to him, and then I told him he might not be the father. Do you remember that conversation, Mr. Clark? Yes, Your Honor. So she did say you may not be the father? This was after we separated. But this was before LaKerny was born, right? This was after she was born that, that, I found this, that she started saying that LaKerny was a man. She just said it's when she had an ultrasound. No. This was after she gave birth to LaKerny. So you had no clue until afterwards. Right. Ms. Bolden, you're saying that you told him specifically before. Yes, I did. So at what point did you tell the other man that he was a possibility? Um, he already had knew. He never had um, doubts of my baby. He always said he just wanted the DNA test with her to prove that he is the father. So, Mr. Clark, did you know there was another man that she was talking about a DNA test with? Yes, Your Honor. You did? Yes, Your Honor. So, at what point did you find this out? During the relationship, I, I, I knew she cheated on me and did all of this, but, like I said, I, I had no doubt that she, she was my daughter. I always felt like that. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. So, when she was born, you started a relationship with her. You 
became her father. I had a bond, Your Honor. And you had a bond. Right. You still have a bond. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Bolden, while you're seeing this bond develop, and you know in your mind that there's another possibility, are you reminding Mr. Clark? No, ma'am, I'm not. Oh. So now you're just letting him go on and believe that Lacerny is his child? Yes. Why is that? Um, because I did, really didn't want to hurt his feelings anymore about uh, my baby might not be his. And so, at what point did you decide to say, I, I gotta tell him? I, I, I just... I have to tell him. My baby was, like, uh, one years old. And what did you say? I told him there is a possibility that my baby might not be his. So, what made you say that? Just looking at my baby, she don't look like him. Like, she has no similarities to him, period. So, you felt like as she grew and developed, you just didn't see a similarity? No, ma'am, I didn't. So, now, Mr. Clark, do you remember that day? Yes, Your Honor. This was after we broke up. LaCurney was born, though. Right, she was but born. But, Ms. Bold, now, let me be clear. You said you told him before... Yes, I after did. ...after the ultrasound, and then you brought it up again when LaCurney was one, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. So, now we're at the instance when she's one years old. Uh-huh. Okay. So, what did she say, Mr. Clark, exactly? I mean, we was... We stay at Oregon all the time. You know, uh, she made statements, I guess, just to hurt me that she wasn't mine. But yet and still, I had no doubt in my mind that that little girl is mine. I always felt like she was my daughter. And I feel like this still. Whenever me and LaCurrent and meet, it's magical. You know what I'm saying? And she's very happy when she sees me. He's like that because she don't... They're you the only person she knows. So, now that you've told the other man, Mr. Moore, has he developed any type of relationship with LaCurney? He wants to be involved. He just said he needs a DNA test um, to prove that he is the father. Um, he barely comes around because he don't know where I stay and he don't know my number. Only time he can contact me is on Facebook. So, if he's your daughter's father, why is it... If it, there's a possibility he is... Why is it he doesn't have any way to contact you? Because I'm always changing my number. Like, I change my number, like, three times out of a month. You do? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because certain people have my number and I don't want them having my number, so I just change my number. But if this man could be your child's father, how can they keep up with their child? <laughs> well, actually, they know where my... Actually, they know where my, uh, brother stay. They know where my grandma lives at. I be over there checking on her sometimes, but I just don't want them having my number. So, Ms. Bolden, does Mr. Clark have your number and does he get to see LaCurney? Only time he get to see her is when she's at my sister's house. No, he don't have my number and no, he don't know where I stay. His attitude towards me is so terrible, so I try not to deal with him on any type of level. All right, so you all have been having a lot of trouble getting along. Right. So, Mr. Clark, as I look at your face, it seems like you really hurt about this. I am, Your Honor. I feel devastated. It's, it's, it's unexplainable right now. I mean, I, I don't know what I'd do if, if I find out LaCrina wasn't mine. I don't know what I'd do. So, you're here today and you're truly hoping that this little girl is yours. Yes, Your Honor. So, now... This other father, does he want to be a father, too? Does he want to be involved? Yes, Your Honor. Are you in a relationship with him at all? No, ma'am, I'm not. Jerome, I want to meet this other possible father. Can you please escort... Sure. ...Mr. Moore in? Mr. Moore, thank you for being here. We're here discussing the paternity as it relates to LaCurney. Do you believe you're this child's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. You do? Yes. Why do you believe that? I believe that because she looks just like me and my son, Your Honor. So, you see a strong resemblance? Yes. Think she looks like you? Yes. So, now, do you want to be her father? You want to yes. be there for her? Yes. You do? Yes. How involved have you been in her life? Not that much. So, if you want her to be your child and you think she's your child, why are you not involved in her life? Because she don't bring her around. 
It's hard to keep up with her. Well, we've heard testimony that would validate that for certain. She says she changes her number. <laughs> so, Ms. Bolden, let me hear from your witness. Please stand up, ma'am. State your name. Wanda Moore. Who are you related to in this situation? Billy Moore. This is my brother. This is your brother? Yes, ma'am. But you're standing with Ms. Bolden? Yes, ma'am. So, what do you know about this situation? What I know is that's my niece. You do? Yes, ma'am. I know from day one that that little girl was my niece. I make sure she get things for her birthday. I just spend time with her. My kids know her. She know my son. You know. And why are you so certain? Because she looks just like us. Nose, mouth, everything. She, she even act like us. Miss Bolden, you're allowing Miss Moore to do these things right. for LaCurney, right? Right. You have her number? No, ma'am. <laughs> on Facebook. We I don't understand this, Jerome. But, I mean, I get through her on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. And so you allow her to be a part of LaCurney's life in this way? Yes, ma'am, because we get along. Mr. Clark, when you hear about how she's allowing the Moore family to really take LaCurney in and accept her as their own, what does that make you feel like? It upsets me. Like this past Christmas, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't work, you know what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm self-employed. I cut hair. I do tattoos from time to time. I took my, I took my hard work and money and bought LaCurney the two gifts. You know, and I dropped them out to her house. She wasn't there that Christmas, this Christmas. I didn't get to see her. I got worried that my, she had to open up her gifts on the porch because they were for me. And I felt like that was wrong. Why would you do that, Ms. Bolden? Yes, I left the gifts on the porch. Um, only reason why I got the gifts off the porch is because my baby sent them. Just like on Facebook, I seen Mr. Moore holding a picture of LaCure and it, 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 it upset me. This is not your child. But she the one who posted the picture, though. And she knew I was gonna see it, so she did that in spite of just to hurt me to get at me. Aww. I didn't know if you were gonna see it because you blocked on Facebook. Your mouth was At that fast. time, I wasn't. At so you saw this was. picture mm -hmm. on Facebook of Mr. Moore mm -hmm. and the little girl you say is your daughter, but it's referring to Mr. Moore as daddy. Right. I just can't do nothing but uh, go through with it until... I found out what's, what's going on today. So you've brought a witness as well. I'd like to hear from your witness. Please stand, ma'am. State your name. Kaze Moore. And you're another Moore? Yes. Ms. Moore, you are... Billy Moore's sister. You are another one of Mr. Moore's sisters. Yes. But you're standing with Mr. Clark. Yes, Your Honor. What do you have to add to this? Well, Your Honor, the reason why I'm here is because... Latoya and Mr. Clark were staying together at the time that the baby was, was made, but she told my brother it was his baby as well. So we no, really... she told me it wasn't mine. Well, then she told... turned around and told me it was. Well, she told him it wasn't his and turned around and told him it was, and that would got me with a little doubts that it's his baby, it's Mr. Clark's baby. So you believe LaCurney is Mr. Clark's child? Yes, Your Honor, a little bit. You do? Yes. Because at first you're saying Ms. Bolden told Mr. Moore it was not his child. Yes, ma'am. And that's why I got doubts. You know, Ms. Clark was... And, and LaCurna calls me daddy. She called me daddy, too. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Ms. Bolden, does she call both men daddy? Yes, she do. Is that confusing for her? Yes, it is. Wow. So, Ms. Bolden, are you hoping Mr. Clark is not the biological father? Yes, ma'am. Or do you truly believe he's not the biological father? I truly believe he's not. On our behalf, like I said, they were staying together, they had a relationship together. So that's why I say that, you know, it's, it's Mr. Clark, baby, because they was in a relationship. But she looked just like us and everything, you know. I just want to know is my brother, baby. And I just want to know the truth, too. And I have that truth for you. Jerome, let's have the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Clark versus Bolden, when it comes to three-year-old LaCurney Clark and whether Mr. Clark or Mr. Moore is her biological father, 
it has been determined by this court that the biological father is Mr. Clark. Amazing. You do. You're very happy. That's good. Ms. Bolden? Yes. How do you feel? I mean, I feel the same. There's no difference. And neither one of them in her life. Do you want Mr. Clark to step up and play a bigger role in her life? To be honest with you, you aren't a no. It's just we don't get along. He does have a legal right to see his child. Wouldn't it be easier on LaKerny if you all could figure out some type of visitation and a way to work together? Yes. Do you want to work on that, Mr. Clark? Yes, Your Honor, for, for, the, for the baby's sake. Now, Ms. Moore, I see that you are very sad. You really, really hope that that was your niece. Yep. So you all have come to love her? We'll be there. your niece. Will you all still stay in her life? Yes. You're not gonna leave her life. Yes, I'm still gonna be I'll there for her. Always be in her life. And so that means if we do this right, family, she could have an amazing village around her of people that love her. Ms. Bolden, is it okay if Mr. Clark sees his little girl? No, ma'am, it's not. You just want him to pay. Right. Ms. Henderson, you claim that you believed Mr. Henderson was your biological father, but at the age of 15, Mr. Rycraw claimed he is your dad. You are doubtful and have opened today's case to get the truth. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Rycraw, you say you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Ms. Henderson is your daughter. You are here with her mother's twin sister, who claims that she, too, is certain you are the biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Henderson, I'll start with you. How has life been without knowing who your father is? You know, it's lonely. Um, my kids, they want to know their grandparents. And my daughter, she tells me all the time, Mom, we're going to find your dad. So, you know, I just... I'm just ready. I want to be close to somebody. I want to be close to them. Um, I've always been close to him, but I need to know the truth. So, Mr. Rycraw, you say you are certain. You are Miss Henderson's biological father, and you know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yes, Your Honor. When we met, I mean, I, it, I don't know, I just felt it. I just felt that she was my daughter. And then just to know that, that, that my sister's resting in her grave and that my niece needs to know who her family really is. I mean, I just need to know, too, for sure, so she can get a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So we can all move on. Be, but the point is, either way it go, He's been her father. He's been her father. And they're going to remain being her father. Be her father. And we thank always the Lord. My daughter. Ms. Henderson, I see your emotion. What are you feeling right now? I know that she's saying that, you know, he's my father, he's my father, but I need to know the truth. I don't want to just think that someone's my father. I don't want that. I want to know. And, and I... growing up, you were told, Mr. Henderson, this is who you grew up knowing was your father. Mm -hmm. Yes, and during the time that I stayed there, um, I was treated different from my sisters. <laughs> they used to tell me that I wasn't, I wasn't their uncle's daughter that I was adopted. Your Honor, can I go over there for a minute? So, would you like to go yes, with Yes, I would. Her? So, I asked her. And I asked him, too. I said, Daddy, are you my daddy? And he told me that he was, he was like, I'm the only daddy you got. And so when my mom came home, I, I told her, I was like, I know that Walter isn't my dad. I don't look like my sisters. So she just gave me another name. And so I'm just tired of hearing all these different names. <laughs> I need to know. Miss Henderson, I know this is very difficult. Mr. Henderson, I need to ask you, what was your relationship like with her mother? We were still good. I mean, that was my wife, and 
you know, I treat my wife like my wife, regardless of what she do. And she was your wife, so why was there any question about Ms. Henderson's paternity? Because she left me in California, went to visit her mother in Arkansas. When she came back about a month or two, my, my other daughter told me that my mom was pregnant. And so when you find that out, you assume she cheated or you assume this is my baby? She was pregnant before she left. Well, Your Honor, Ashley, when I talked to her, I told her, if it's a girl, it's ours. If it's the boy, you gotta go. Mm. Oh, so you had an inkling, you had yes. a suspicion. That it wasn't mine. Are you on the birth certificate? No. You are. You are. I am? You are. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Been a long time, Yon. Well, yeah, I mean, especially if she was married to you, then you would likely be on the birth certificate as father. Father. There you are, Walter Henderson. Yes, that's me. So, Miss Henderson, take me to the day you met Mr. Rycroft. Okay. What was that day like? Well, my aunt called me, and she told me to come meet my dad. And when we met and we held each other, and it was, it was, it was good. But I asked my mom after that about him, and she told me, she said, I don't know why William thinks he's your dad, because the last time I was with him, I was 18. And I had you when I was 25 or 26. Mm -hmm. My sister, when it comes to telling the truth on certain things, they'll beat around the bush. <laughs> and like she didn't answer him when she came back, she didn't tell her the truth either. Why do you think your sister didn't tell the truth? Because they both was in a relationship. They both were married. And then when I when my sister called and told me, and I said, uh, it's not my place to tell. Okay, so now at what point did your sister tell you the secret? After she's been here two years. What, what did she say? How did she say she it? She said, I said, who is her daddy? I said, you can't lie to me because we twins. Who is her daddy? <laughs> and she said, William. So the truth is, is they were both having affairs... With each other. With each other. Yes, Your Honor. And that's why this thing went hush, hush, hush swept hush, under the rug. Hush, under the rug, as the old folks say at my hometown, under the rug swept that dirt. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. I was tired of just beating around the bush, not saying nothing about it. So I went on and told her, do you want to meet your daddy? So you called her that day? I called her that day. And Miss Henderson? And I asked him, did he want to meet his daughter? I called him, and he came to Revival, and I said, you want to meet your daughter? So, Mr. Rycroft, I do want to hear from you. What was that day like? Well, I, I was just astonished about it. And I believe she's my daughter because before Karen went back to Calif California, uh, I believe she was pregnant. I, I believed it, that she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when we met, it was so emotional. But I accepted her because I believed in my heart that she was. So, Miss Henderson, when you listen to this testimony, does it make you believe that Mr. Rycroft is your biological father? No. Because before my mom passed, I was always... I was questioning her. Who was my dad? And she gave me this man's name. Tell me about that. It wasn't until I got older that I decided to, you know, go and see this man. So, I'm... I, I don't know what to believe right now. And so, what happened when you met him? You said you went to go see him? What happened? I did. And I thought I looked like him, too. And he remembered my mom. And, um... We got a test. And I called to get the results, but they didn't give me the results. So he called me and he told me that he wasn't my dad, so I never saw the results. So up until that point, did you believe he was your biological father? That's what my mom told me it was. And I can see how much that hurts you. Did you build a relationship with that man? No, I wouldn't allow myself to build it with him or that man because... I'm t I don't want to be, like, just building relationships with people and it's not my dad. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want that.
I want the truth. That's what I want. I want to know the right one so I can have the right connection. I'm upset because I went through so much and I could have been with my dad, but my sisters, them, they had an okay life and I didn't. I, I, nobody was there for me. Miss Henderson, the other man, the third man, the man your mother told you is your biological father. This court was able to get a hold of those test Whoa. results. <laughs> As it relates to this other gentleman, the probability of paternity was determined to be 0.00%. He's not your biological father. <laughs> Get the medic. Get the medic. Someone call the medic, please. <laughs> you can get her in the chair. Okay. Can you bring a chair closer, please? Three. There you okay. go. You okay? Yeah. Relax. Slide your hips back so you can sit in there good. Okay. Thank you. Slow, deep breathing. Nice and slow. <clears throat> let me, you know, that okay. one door hangs up. Let me, let me open the door. Miss Henderson, I have to ask you, after the reading of the results, your aunt, Miss Murray, she was so overcome with emotion, she fainted. How are you feeling? I'm just even more scared. When you say you're even more scared, why? Because, like, what if it's nobody, you know? I always be your dad. I know, Daddy, I know, but that's not what I'm looking for. But does it make it more possible in your mind, more feasible, that Mr. Rycroft could be your biological father, just as your aunt had stated? I don't, I don't know what to think right now. Because my mom told me that even when she was dying. So I just don't know. And when she was dying and I kept asking her, was it him? She gave me another person that she didn't know his name. Yo, and I still believe she's my daughter. I, I can't check that feeling. And I love her. I've been loving her for a long time, like I said. And I believe she's my daughter. I... You've brought a witness, and I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, will you please stand and step over to the podium? State your name for the record. Latoya Banks. Ms. Banks, you are Mr. Rycraw's... Oldest daughter. Oldest daughter. Yes, ma'am. And can you tell the court what your understanding is as it relates to Ms. Henderson? Were you told that that's your sister? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe she's your sister? I don't. I just don't have that connection with her that I have with my other siblings. Um, I can't say that she isn't my sister, but I just don't, don't believe that she's my sister. Um, we accepted her and loved her because my dad loves her. Mm. We just want to know the truth, me and my siblings. We just want to know the truth. And that's exactly what this court is about, getting to the truth. Ms. Henderson, if you are ready, I'm ready. I have the truth for you. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. These results prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Henderson versus Rycraw, when it comes to 33-year-old Mercedes Henderson, 
It has been determined by this court. Mr. Henderson, you are not the father. The next result reads as follows. In the case of Henderson versus Rycroft, when it comes to 33-year-old Mercedes Henderson, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Rycroft, you are not the father. You are, dear. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry, Miss Henderson. Miss Henderson, do you need to just sit down? You want to sit down, honey? Can you take a deep breath? You are dead. Life deals us blows that we breath? don't expect and that we don't deserve. But we got your back. If you need us, we're here. Okay? All right. I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned. Come on, can you walk over here? I got to give you a hug. You gonna be okay, okay? This is just one day. We're gonna march on. We're gonna heal, right? You know, think about everything you do have that's a blessing in your life. 